Let's start with the Penguins' decision to trade Riley Smith. It was a decision that it feels like was made a while ago, but now we finally have a resolution to that storyline. The Penguins send Riley Smith to the New York Rangers with 25% of his salary retained, which is $1.25 million for the 2024-25 season. In return, they get a 2027 second round pick and a 2025 fifth round pick. Your thoughts on the finally resolution to the Riley Smith trade discussions from this summer. Yeah, like you said, finally, or it's been or it's already been determined. Yeah, this trade just felt like a long time coming. It was just a matter of finding the right trade partner and deciding what kind of return the Penguins wanted. They settled on just a couple of draft picks and retaining some salary, which you were gonna probably have to do if you weren't throwing in more pieces. Uh, it, it was just purely, this trade just looked like it was purely getting Riley Smith off the roster because um, things didn't work out. Riley Smith might go on and have a really good year in New York. We, If you're a Penguins, Penguins fan, you cannot be upset at that because uh, he has a track record of being a good player still. Um, mm-hmm. And part of me kind of expects him to go on and do pretty good things for the rest of his career. But the fit just wasn't here in Pittsburgh. That's all it was. And, Loading up on draft picks has been Dubas's forte uh, since getting here. He didn't uh, add too many at the most recent draft, but he also didn't send any away. So uh, he's going to have some picks to really revamp everything down the line. And mm-hmm. uh, if, for what it's worth, and we're going to have this whole episode not even discuss the draft, which a lot of people seem to be happy with, which is mm-hmm. a good step in the right direction for the Penguins. And um, when it comes to free agency, the deal with Riley Smith. Um, I'd say the team is trending in the correct direction and it all started with uh, dealing Riley Smith and getting most of that Mm. contract off the books. You mentioned trending in the right direction. I think that depends on who you ask and what direction they think the Penguins should go in. The Penguins direction, and we'll talk about in a little bit what it seems like Kyle Dubas's direction is for this organization. But when you look at the trades, I mean, first and foremost, the trade should tell you what the direction he's headed in. He traded, if you look at his last two trades over this past weekend, he traded Riley Smith for a second, a fifth, Kevin Hayes, and another second, essentially. Because that's mm-hmm. that's the out versus in on his last two trades. And that points to one thing, which is a, a retool or rebuild, depending on who you ask what the Penguins are heading towards. But we'll get into that in a little bit. As far as the Riley Smith thing, you hit the nail on the head. It was only a matter of time before this happened. 13 goals, 40 points, and 76 games played. He just didn't fit with the Penguins. And by the end of the season, it was evident, especially considering he was playing on the third line with Lars Eller and Valtteri Pustin. And then, yeah, he started to find his footing a little bit. But I think we can all agree that if you're paying $5 million to Riley Smith to be on that third line, you're really kind of wasting that salary cap space, especially when you can go out there and get, in my opinion, surprisingly, more than you paid for him. I understand you have to retain $1.25 million, but as far as future assets is concerned, you traded away a third-round pick, which is not a, a nothing asset, to get Riley Smith. Now, you thought that you were getting a much better version of Riley Smith, but at the end of the day, you flip him after a down season for a second-round pick and a fifth-round pick, and, and that's good asset management from Kyle Dubas. Now, there are the things that... You know, I didn't particularly like from Kyle Dubas, but I will give him credit where it's due. I think his two trades this weekend were pretty decent for the Penguins. Not that I love the Kevin Hayes addition, but at the same time, I can see the point, especially whenever you're looking at a team that is is not going to go for a Stanley Cup next year. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting... The Kevin Hayes thing is going to be a little interesting. It'll be yeah. the obvious... He's going to fill out as a third-line center... He can shift to wing if he needs to. Uh, and if he's bad enough, you drop him to fourth. I don't know what else to say, but uh, you got to keep the expectations high. I'm sure I bagged on Kevin Hayes on this show uh, years ago. But yeah. uh, here we are. It's a new era. We are moving along. And well, he uh, could absolutely be a useful asset for the Penguins if given the right opportunity, given the right mm-hmm. situation. He's not you know, costing the Penguins a ton of money. I think that's a pretty solid that's a pretty solid sign. And man, I keep forgetting that the one draft pick from the Rangers is two years away still. But yes. Got a long build ahead of them. And 
they're loading up. There's a ton of draft picks in the, over the next three drafts that are in the Penguins' possession that, mm-hmm. like I said, Cal Dubas likes adding them. And if they realize, hey, that they, they can go for something, let's say they're in a pretty good spot come trade deadline, you're still holding on to three first-round picks if you want to go add or if you want mm-hmm. to ship out on any other number of picks for something. Uh, you never know because hockey is weird. Um, and you can't doubt Sidney Crosby sometimes. Yeah, I think they would have to be in a really, really good position, like top three, easily in the Metro position to trade away one of those first round picks. I don't think, I don't think it's going to be easy to to pry those away from Kyle Dubas, especially considering the direction that he seems to want to take this team. But you know, to close out the Riley Smith thing, for one, Penguins will play, and this was announced yesterday as well, amidst all the craziness. The Penguins will play opening night on October 9th at PPG Paints Arena against the New York Rangers, and against Riley Smith. That's a recipe for disaster if you're the Penguins on opening night because you know Riley Smith is going to make a significant impact in one way or other against his former team that night. Eh, It's unless he doesn't want to be in New York either. I find it hard to believe. I I mean, I personally love New York. I know there's some people that don't like it, but, you know, Riley Smith, he might have wanted to be a Southwestern guy, but we'll see what he ends up doing in New York. I just wanted to throw one more jab out there. Yeah, you know, I'm sure he's going to do fine. It's uh, it just wasn't the right situation for him in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. And if the Penguins are lucky, he keeps on to the same trend at least for Game One. Yeah, at least for Game One, and maybe the three or four other times the Penguins end up playing the New York Rangers next season. The the question that I have before we get to the nine players signed on opening day of free agency is: there anyone else after Riley Smith, especially after you've seen now where some of the dust is settled? Is there anyone else that you see Dubas moving out this offseason via trade, I should say? For a trade, it, I mean, the offseason isn't over. I could still see the Tristan Jari situation going in a step further, and I'm sure he's still looking for some sort of taker on Ryan Graves. It's the way that they still kind of want to bring P.O. Joseph back but haven't been able to yet, and yet they signed a player, Matt Grizzly, which we'll get into. There's a, there's a log jam all of a sudden if they decide to bring P.O. Joseph back. So mm-hmm. maybe Ryan Graves is still on the block. Who knows? That one seems less likely, but uh, I'm sure you just keep that you keep that uh, thing in the fire until someone strikes, maybe. Yeah, especially with the performance he had and the contract he has. But for the most part, I doubt that he ends up getting moved simply because of that contract. Because of how poor he was last season. When I look at now after yesterday who i think could potentially be on the block that's lars zeller or nola chari obviously kyle dubas is saying that he wants to weaponize salary cap space he wants to bring in some pretty decent assets lars zeller was pretty good last year for the pittsburgh penguins and i think if there's a team that's out there that needs a depth center at this point of the offseason they'd be willing to pay a decent draft asset or maybe a, a b prospect or maybe even a c prospect which the penguins you know you can't be choosy when your prospect system looks the way the penguins does but i think what's telling to me about that and the reason that i've kind of changed my tune on that after yesterday is they signed three center capable guys right they traded for kevin hayes who kyle dubas said yesterday they're going to look for him to play center out the gates blake lazotte who will get to play center and according to you know puckpedia Anthony Ubovillier, who is likely going to be a winger with the Pittsburgh Penguins, has center capabilities as well. So you have all of these guys, not to mention a Sam Poulin, not to mention a Vasily Ponomarev, not to mention, I believe Jonathan Gruden has played center before as well. You have a lot of center capable guys. And while I, I do like the fact that the Hayes move bumps down Eller to 4C and maybe, you know, Lazat can fit in where he fits best it opens the door for you to get some more assets and considering Kyle Dubas is saying that he wants to, you know, start this kind of asset, you know, collection. I, I think Eller or Achari could end up being on the other side of that. 